hey guys i'm rachel i'm here to share with you something that was laid in my heart to share with you so this afternoon as i was studying the bible i was studying this um ephesians chapter 6 i'll read it soon but i was studying it and the lord was speaking to me about that particular verse of the bible and i was trying to write it down <laughs> just like the other time i was just trying to join out to write things down and he said i should see it i should just make a video now please i want to say something before i start if you hear any noise at the background it's actually my son i don't have a help so the other one has gone to school so the younger one is with me so he refused to sleep and i have to do this now because it was laid in my heart so heavy to do it and if i don't do it now I don't know when this it might just i don't know i just vanish like a vape or something like that so please in case if you hear any noise at the background he might even come to me am i carrying him as i'm making this video i mean we still have to deliver the word we are just the vessel in the hand of the lord so in case if you hear any noise that's him so he's fine for now so but then you might be hearing him maybe say one or two things from time as as we move on so back to what i'm trying to say i was trying to study the book of ephesians it started last night actually i was trying to study the book of ephesians particularly um verse um chapter six from verse 10 down so i had this I, I god was just trying to download a lot of things to me that last night but to be honest as a human i was extremely tired i couldn't even write i just read it through and as i i didn't i didn't write anything i just slept off so this afternoon i said okay let me take time and just read it again and as i started reading it he started pouring out things inside of me you understand so and i'm here to share it i will read the scripture just two verse in that ephesians chapter six and now we just we just dive into it or we just say one or two things about it so let me read i'm reading from the king james version ephesians chapter six from verse um i will just go straight to the point 11 and 12. i read from 10 to the end but i'll just read 11 and 12 because that's where the main point is so 11 said put on the whole armor of god that he may be able to stand against the wells of the of the devil once you surrender to the lord you are you become a target for the devil that is one thing that is a certain thing that must happen like you become a target to the devil because even when the scripture said let your light so shine that the world may see in the spiritual realm if your light is so bright very bright is an indication that you are surrender to the lord and as the more the brighter the, the brighter your light is the more you become a target for the devil because he knows that people are following you people are, are following you because you're the light of the world because you're carrying something inside of you i'm not particularly talking about pastors evangelists apostles i'm just talking about as a christian as a believer as a christian that is practicing christianity not just a christian maybe just your i'm a christian by <laughs> by birth not that i'm talking about a believer someone that believes in the lord so the lord is now saying put on the whole armor of god because he knows that these things will happen the devil will come to you the devil will want to do the, want to dim your life the devil will want to strike sorry my love the devil will want to strike you the devil will want to put you down by all means just because of those that are for he doesn't want you to fulfill that which the lord has said you will fulfill or that assignment the lord has sent you to do so he's telling us to put on the whole armor of god putting on the whole armor of god is just like you always staying in the place of in the presence of the lord not like physically or naturally staying in the presence of the lord but at every point in your life like every time every minute every second he said in the book of job so was the last chapter i mean read the whole of job you will see that job said let this book of the law not depart out of thy mouth thou shalt meditate on it day and night day and night it means that you should study the word you should pray day and night not the rituals that we do the morning and night devotions i mean they are helpful they are very much helpful um i'm an av advocate for that but what he's talking about is just your personal relationship with god with god you shall meditate on it day and night when you sit with the lord when you study your bible when you pray always not praying because you have a problem but when you love the lord with all your heart you come to his presence just to worship him just to praise him just to honor him just to reverence him this is you putting on the whole armor of god in your life 
so what am i trying to say it's just a call for our life to develop this serious relationship with god so if and one thing one thing is sure if you're not surrendered to the lord indirectly or directly you're surrendered to the other guy you're surrendered to the devil and you make yourself available for the devil to use you to do anything he wants to do on earth he you make yourself available for the devil to penetrate you to use you to hurt people to use you to disappoint people to use you to break people's hearts to use you to do anything any of his agenda but the thing is that just know that once you are saved the once you are a believer that there are things the devil will try to come for you because he knows that you recognize the, the 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 revelation the plans the purpose why god created you why god put you on earth so he will want to come and towards it and he will use human beings i don't just mean random people i mean people that are very close to you that you consider family that you consider friends that you you love so much of course if someone if someone an outsider that you don't even care about what you wouldn't it wouldn't even talk, be, be, become hot you'd be like i expected it like nothing i have nothing to do with this person you understand he's just a random person that i don't even know so it wouldn't even be like so painful than someone close to you someone close to you like a sister like a mod your mother your brother your husband your wife your friend hurting you that's why you see you hear people say um a friend betrayed me it hurts them so bad because probably they held that person so much to their hearts you understand i'm not saying that you shouldn't have someone close to your heart no that is not what i'm saying but what i'm trying to say is that the devil will use what interests you the most the devil will use who you love the most to come after you especially when when they are not surrendered to the lord especially when they are not really rooted in the lord now let's go to verse 12 that is actually my main the main place verse 12 said for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places now this is so so if you read this with um with uh, if god gives you that revelation in this scripture you will understand that listen to what i said something initially that if you're not surrendered to the lord you're surrendered to the devil that means you become a vessel for the devil to use and now this verse 12 is saying that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood to tell you what to just confirm what we read in the previous verse we don't we are not wrestling against flesh and blood you're not fighting humans they are not the ones doing it to you your brother is not the one that hurt you your sister is not the one that hurt you your friend your wife, your husband is not the one that hurts you. There is a spirit behind it. There is a spirit behind those things that are happening. I don't know how to communicate this, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to understand and digest this very well. You know, most times we go through pain, through hurt that, okay, this person uh, this person got me angry or this person hurt me. I did all this for this person and you hurt me. But they, they are spirits behind these things normal human being that god created wouldn't want to hurt anybody do you want to tell me that god is creating people just to kill no there is a spirit behind it god would say god would say that the people that i created in my image are not like that but because they probably made this made themselves available for the devil to just penetrate them as a vessel and use them as a vessel to get at you. That's when you start experiencing all this pain, all this hurt. But when you see it from the spiritual aspect of it, when you don't, when you look past the physical, now it will make you to understand that these people are not even the ones doing this thing. There are spirit behind. So if you're fighting, you should go fight the root and not the person. You should fight the root cause of it. You should all put if you want to cut down a tree and you don't want that tree to grow back you go to you go to the root to uproot everything everything let it come out but when you just slash out the branches and all that be, within few months it will start growing back but in your mind you have caught that you solved the problem but spiritually or looking at it later it will still come back that is why we keep on having your current um um problems or challenges because we don't sort out the root cause of it. We don't go to the root to solve it. We don't go to the root to sort it out. We don't rebuke the spirit behind it. Oh my God. We don't, sorry. Come, come, come. 
Oh my God. Say hi. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, so because we refuse to walk on the root, the root of the problem, now you start hating on your friend, you start hating on your brother, you start hating on your sister. I will never talk to this person again in my life. You start hating on your wife. Meanwhile, the devil is just using them as a vessel or the spirit just at that moment is just a little crack and the spirit of the darkness possessed enter them and use them to get at you. They are trying to distract you. It's trying to distract you from what you are supposed to do. And you find out that this thing starts draining you emotionally that you can't even concentrate in the presence of God. It starts draining you emotionally that you can't even, when you come to the presence of God, instead of you praying, instead of you to worship, the way you used to enjoy God's presence, you now come with songs like, Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles and more if you today. That kind of song. I'm not saying that this is not a good song no please don't get me wrong but you know most times our the problems that we face the challenges that we face make us to come to god with i don't know we start aligning towards anything that has to do with <laughs> that problem i don't know how to say but one thing i've learned in god is that whatever thing situation you're going through come to his presence with worship empty yourself and just worship like that is a very powerful tool. You won't you won't understand. There are a lot of things that God has taught me through that I, I I can't share them because I'm not permitted to share them yet. Probably later when I am, I will share them. But when you start coming to to that to God's presence with such a I know I haven't lost my faith. I must confess that that is hard for me to pray. That is what the devil wants. He wants it to be very difficult for you to pray. And he will make you forget the days you said, And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. I will always worship you means in good and in bad. I will always worship you means whether I am happy or not. I will always worship you means whether everything is going as planned or not. I will always worship you means whether there is food on my tummy or not. I will always worship you means whether there is money in my account or not. That is always like every single day. Then you make you start forgetting the promise you made to God because these songs we sing, they are not just mere songs. They are just they are worship. You are communicating to God. You are, most of them are covenants. That you're telling God, I will always worship you as long as I am living, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. So it, it starts shifting your mindset. You now start praying against those things, praying against those people. Meanwhile, they are not the problem. The enemy just found a little crack and penetrated through them to get at you. Now, can we go back to the um let me this this um during um in Matthew. In the midst of the storm, Jesus and the disciples. I want to read out something to you very quickly. Matthew chapter 8 verse 23. Um, let me start from verse 24. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that they... I can't really see well. My laptop is dim. So that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was... Wait, oh, stop, stop, darling. Stop, stop, stop that. Stop, stop. Sorry about that. <clears throat> but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We are going down. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. Now, the boat was like, it was more like the boat that they were in. They, it was so, the wind was so boisterous and all that. So the boat was you know, swinging them from left to right, which is quite scary, very rare. Now, what they are seeing is how the boat is moving and it's scaring them. Like, we can get inside this water, like, just like joke, like joke, like joke. The wind, um, the wind was moving the boat left, right and center. Like, it was not just stable again. It was not balancing the water again. That was the problem they were facing. Now, see what Jesus did. Jesus did not say to the boat, I command you stay still. Mm -mm. He went to the root cause. Why the boat was moving that way? The root cause is the wind. Can you see wind? We can't see wind. It's more like a spirit thing. You can't see wind and hold on to wind and say, look at the wind. But you can see the boat 
And the boat is the problem, so long as I'm looking at it. Jesus went to the root cause, which is the wind and the waves, and spoke to them and said, I command you, peace be still, and the boat aligned. What is he trying to tell you? Tell you? When there is a problem, I don't know why I keep on talking about problem, I don't know. But when you're going through something, even when you're hurt by someone, I know it's actually very difficult. Don't sit on that person. Don't sit on that person. Go to the root cause. There is a spirit behind it. It's not even after those people. It's after you. It's after your Christian life. It's after your prayer life. It's after your worship life. It's after your word life. For you to start doubting God. And they will start shooting thoughts, negative thoughts in your mind. Go to the root cause of it and deal with it. That is what Jesus did. The even in healing of the madman and all that, he commanded the spirit to leave the madman and to enter the pig. This world is spiritual, but we think that is something we can handle naturally, physically. Have you not heard people going to bed and they can, the next morning they can't even stand up from the bed? There was nothing wrong with them. Of course, medically we'll give it a name. But there are things that were planted in the spirit and they manifested real life. Let me tell you something. There was someone that really hurt me so bad. I don't want to, I don't want, I won't mention name, but the girl really hurt me very bad. I was pain because where I was pain was that I was nice to, I was nice to her actually. Very nice to her. Took her as my sister. So something happened and she just did what she did and acted the way she acted. I was angry. And like a human that I am, I was waiting for, maybe I wouldn't be the one to pay back, but I wanted something to happen to her back. You understand that kind of situation that, you know, you can't do anything, but you shall want to receive negative news, bad news about that person. Not that the person would die, you God forbid, no. That was not the extent I went to like, but something should happen. So four years later, I got a news that something negative happened to her. So, <coughs> physically, natural me, the canal me, I was happy inside of me that mm, I think it serves her right. You understand? That that is the natural. But later in the night when I was praying, the Holy Spirit rebuked me. That is not the fruit of the Spirit. That is not what Jesus taught. That is not the way Jesus to live. You know, when I was even praying that same night, something I've forgotten, he laid it in my heart to pray for her. Oh my God, I have to take out this earring. What does this boy go? I have to take it off. So, that night when I was praying, actually, I mean, I got the news like maybe last week and my mind, my soul was rejoicing that, okay, fine, you understand. But later, maybe like one week later, I was just praying, normal, my normal prayer, with, just praying to God. He, Holy Spirit, sorry, 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 sorry. Holy Spirit laid it in my heart to pray for her. At first, I struggled. I'm like, why? Like, why? She deserves it. She hurts me. It's like she's not the one that hurts you. She's just a vessel. The person I created is not like that. Remember, I made you in my image and likeness. The way I created you, that's the way I made her. The way I love you, that's the way I love her. So she is not the one that did that to you. Then we, there was a spirit behind it. So pray for her. Pray a blessing over her life. Ah, man. That, that's when you... <laughs> that, that's when you get to... And you know when you when you start working with the Lord, things that normally you can't do, that those are the things that He will push you to start doing. I had to start praying a blessing over her, unwillingly, like because I was just instructed to do that. In my mind, I was still wrestling. Like, I mean, she deserves it. Why would I pray? But I had to just start praying for her. She doesn't even know till today. I had to start praying for her. I started praying a blessing over her. As I started praying blessings over her, I started praying for restoration. I started praying that God will visit her. I started praying that God will just bring her closer to himself. When I started praying that prayer, just that particular period I was still praying, my heart started melting. Like the offense, I, I kid you not, the offense started melting. Today, I can tell you that I'm not even angry with her. If I see her, I'll hug her. Like it's real. 
seriously it's if you have this mindset you know he said in the bible let this mind be in us that was also in christ jesus the same mind that jesus had if we have that same mind towards our fellow humans you won't have much problem we won't have much problem on earth we won't, we won't have much hatred much hurt much pain on people you start seeing them the way christ sees them most times when i pray when i make a prayer i tell god let me see people how you see them let me not see them with my natural eyes with my natural mind like see them you know what there are people you see you start judging them in your mind like uh, this one cannot even be close to heaven but god loves them god created them so what are we talking about so when you start seeing people the way excuse me god sees them it will make you to radiate more love instead of more judgment towards people you love people the more for who they are no matter how bad they are no matter what they have done because you yourself you're not even perfect there are things that you have done maybe previously before you give your life to christ so what are we talking and god loved you then he sustained you was patient with you until you came running to him so why don't you think that such thing can also happen for such people you, you start seeing that god will start pressing it in your heart to pray for those that are lost those that are not that are not that have not known him even the ones you know and the ones you don't know people you don't know god can just tell you to start interceding on their behalf that that the holy spirit will go and bring them back return them back and not to start praying hatred you want the person to since the person hurt you let the person die no 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 so what am I trying to say? In 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 God's presence, God will guide you. The Holy Spirit will guide us to all truths. When I come to His presence, to be honest with you, I don't come. I've learned to not come with a prayer topic, because many times I've tried to come with prayer topic. I, I'm, I'll be redirected to pray for something else. So I just come to worship. I just come to fellowship. He said we don't even know what we, what we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit make that prayer for us. When I start worshiping, when I start praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit will start putting it in my heart. Start telling me the things I should pray for. Majority of them doesn't even concern me. <laughs> Majority of them are not even talking about my issues, my problem. It's just once in a while that God can just tell me, oh, yeah, address this particular issue in your life. That I maybe I've been telling him about. That is just how it is. So I want to encourage anyone. Let go of the hurt. Let go of the pain. They are not the problem. Love them. Jesus died for us. He loved us with an everlasting love. That's why he died for us. Because he knew what we were going to do. Most of See the way we are messing up. Yet, he still loves us. Imagine if God was, was a man. <laughs> they would have wiped. <laughs> Especially this our generation. They would have wiped everybody. That, to be honest. So, let go of the hearts. Let go of the pain. <clears throat> love people. Radiate love. From your heart. Me, particularly, I don't know how to love people. Especially when I don't have anything to do with you or when I see that you're a bad person. I don't... I don't but I started... I, 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 I surrendered my heart to the Lord. I said, Lord, let me love like you do. Let me see them the way you see them. I'm not saying that me, I'm perfect. But this is like, as you're running the race, you're trying to help your sister, you're trying to help your brother to run along to while you're running your race. So if we can see them through the lens of Jesus Christ, then we can radiate more love. <laughs> I need to go. This way is disturbing me. So I just pray that you've gotten one thing from this message. I don't know if I'm missing anything because I wrote down some things. Let me check. I don't know. Check, check. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Anything that I'm missing, the Holy Spirit will put it to your heart. As you sit down to study the word, as you sit down to pray, the Holy Spirit will minister to you. He will tell you, you bring all things to your remembrance. So let's just let's just say a small prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for this word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for you are the one that said it to us, oh God. It's not me, nobody. 
I pray that, oh God, that this word will minister healing, oh God, to every soul that is hurt, to every soul that has pain, oh God, to every heart, oh God, that is broken, oh God. Let this word minister healing, oh God. And Father King, oh, we let the Holy Spirit, oh God, minister, oh God, a total healing, a perfect healing, and take out the problem from the root, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answering our prayers, oh Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. See you next time. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.